to us personally to have an epiphany that God manifested himself in the person of Jesus so that he could show us how to live with the grace of God making our lives fulfilling and blessed and as we celebrate the meaning of this revelation God is giving us this morning one more aspect one more insight as to why Jesus became human like us on the day of Pentecost which is always celebrated on January the 6th, when the three magi or eastern kings came to pay homage to the baby Jesus, we learned that Jesus, the Christ, is born for all people and not just for the Jewish people. Then the first Sunday in Epiphany, we remember the baptism in the River Jordan and God's recognition of Jesus as his beloved son. A revelation, again, that Jesus is God. And then last week, Jesus performing the first miracle at Cana, turning water into the best wine, to show his miraculous power and presence with us, in our family, and with our friends. And today, the third Sunday of Epiphany, we celebrate another manifestation of Jesus being a part of our daily lives have the insight to look for the incarnate Jesus, to believe and know that Jesus is always with us in our daily lives, to have the insight to look for the incarnate God, to look for the light of Jesus where there is darkness, to look for the joy where there is pain or sadness, and look for peace where there seems to be more trouble and chaos in our lives. And Jesus will be with you throughout all of it. And this brings us to the gospel this morning, where Jesus says, Today this scripture has passage is fulfilled in your hearing. As I tell this story again this morning, think of Jesus being here in this church this morning, rather than in the synagogue, being present with us in the flesh. The scripture story this morning is about a young man who is a lay reader for the Sunday morning church service who has been away from home for some time and now has returned home for the weekend. The service is the same comfortable service and everyone is settled back in their pew, relaxed and calm. The young man comes forward and lifts up the Bible. It's marked for reading in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. It's open to its place already. Then he booms out in a loud voice, almost defiant sounding voice. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, the recovery to the blind, and set free the oppressed. Heads jerk up. Sleepy eyes pop up. What, what's going on here? The same boomy voice continues. What you have just heard has been fulfilled today, right here, right now. The silence fills the church. Every eye is focused on that young man. And then comes the breath of a person that shouts out, Blasphemy! He can't really mean that. Isn't that the son of Joseph and Mary? Who does he think he is? What arrogance. When they all got over the shock of who was saying these things, there was a shock of what he was saying. He's talking about turning their world upside down. Those have-nots will now have. The prisoners, they're going to let, be let go. The disabled are going to be healed. The slaves will be freed. This is just too much to bear, to hear. Unless you're one of the poor, or one of the captives, 
or if you're blind or oppressed. We don't want radical change, especially if it's going to affect us or cost us something. We like our lives just the way they are. We enjoy our evenings with friends and our freedom to do what we want, when we want. Who is this Jesus who is saying these things? Why is he talking about disrupting our life, our society, our world? None of these things he is talking about has anything to do with us. We're not poor. We aren't in prison. We aren't blind. We certainly aren't oppressed. We're fairly well off, healthy, and free to do what we want. These, weren't, these words are not for us. Of course, there are good goals for the church, but we have other people that can do that. Why Jesus? Why does Jesus expect me to do something I don't feel comfortable to do? And really, I don't have the time to do. So I'll settle back and get comfortable again. I have too much other stuff to think about in my, my life. Besides, he's not talking about me. This is too often the attitude of the Christian today. Jesus' words 2,000 years ago aren't for us. Jesus isn't talking about me. Or is he? Who are the poor Jesus is talking about? Are these the dirty little kids with straggly hair sitting on the front steps of a ramshackle house whose mother's on welfare? Or is the poor those who never take time to enjoy life? and are always complaining, are the one who only thinks of themselves. There are many other examples of being poor that don't have anything to do with money. So who are the poor then? They are all around us. This is where we are challenged by Jesus and the gospel to see where we are poor. Because he isn't talking about one group of people being poor. He's talking about you and me. Who then are the captives? Are they only the ones in jail or prison? Could there be those who are held captive by some addiction? Alcohol, gambling, work, food. Are held captive by guilt or shame or anger, etc. How about the oppressed? Are they people who are ruined, ruled by tyrants? Maybe a husband who makes the wife toe the line and do only what he wants her to do. Are they those surrounded by prejudices and fears and have no pretend and do, have to pretend that it's not really happening? Are they the people who are different than you are so that you can just ignore them? you put them down below you because you don't have, they don't have what you have? How many people live with hopelessness in this world today? Their lives are routine, so boring, so miserable, and yet they keep hoping for the rainbow, but they aren't willing to change, especially when it comes to letting go and letting God change them. Who is Jesus calling the blind? Are we blind when we have a strong eyesight but can't see the problems that our neighbors are having right next to us? Or we can't even see the blindness in our own life? Are the blind the ones who are living with someone with a destructive behavior because they can't seem to see what they're doing is ruining their life and their family's life because they're afraid to get help? Are we the blind who, the, to the justices of other people endure every day and look the other way. These are the same people Jesus was talking about in the synagogue who live in poverty, captivity, blindness, and oppression. They existed then and they exist today. And God came to the earth as a man named Jesus to try to help us understand that we don't have to accept the problems as burdens on us that only I have, and I can't let anyone else know about my problem. So I have to carry them alone. Yes, there are problems. We all have problems. 
but it's what we do with them that makes us content and happy with our life, that gives us peace throughout the day because we trust Jesus. We as Christians who already believe in Jesus being the incarnate God should know he is the only one that can help us. The only one. And he does it with the Holy Spirit working through people, through you and me, to accomplish his will on earth. God uses us to bring the healing love and peace to all types of situations in all types of people's lives. God's love and forgiveness actually happens in a down-to-earth way as we love and we care for one another and as we forgive one another. Albert Schweitzer once said that those who have been hurt always carry the scar of the hurt with them, and because of it, they are drawn close to others who suffer. He called it the brotherhood of those who bear the mark of pain. If you know and understand what he is saying, then you know, too, what Jesus is saying. If you know, that, if you know what it's like to be poor, to be held captive, to be blind or oppressed in any sense, then work to free yourself from them. Why not try Jesus? Why not go to Jesus to help you? That's why we, he came to earth, to show us the good news, that God loves you enough to die for you, to die for your sins, to give you eternal life with him in heaven. The last thing Jesus tells us in the gospel, you remember he says, Jesus came to proclaim the Lord's favor. What is the Lord's favor? It is Jesus' full commitment to you. And it has begun now. You and I know that he shows us unbelievable love, unconditional love on the cross. And he left the power of God and the Holy Spirit that lives in us today so that we can break free from the evil in the world. Jesus said it wouldn't be easy, but it would be worth it. Jesus brought us a vision of God's will and God's way. And best of all, Jesus brought us hope, knowing we're never alone, but that God is always present with us through the manifestation of Jesus in our lives today in the epiphany of Christ. God strengthens us. God cares for us. God loves us, and he wants and desires to be in our lives every minute of every day. And that's the good news that Jesus brings to us on this third Sunday in Epiphany. Amen.